I've got my friend Janine Mitchell with me today and we're going to talk about, or Janine's going to talk about um, her experience working with sex offenders when she was a probation officer. Uh, she worked as a probation officer for many years working with sex offenders, uh, paedophiles. Uh, she's also studied criminology and psychology. Um, she currently works, she, she runs her own business, Change for Success. Um, she's a stress management consultant. But um, today I just wanted to ask Janine a few questions about her time working as a probation officer. So Janine, can you um, just start by explaining your role as a probation officer and, um, and then we'll move on to some more questions. Yeah, sure, sure, Sam. So, um, yeah, I'm really happy to talk about this subject because I think people need to need to know and they need to learn about about this. Really, I think it's really important. So, so yeah, I worked as a probation officer for 13 years, and I specialised in working with high risk offenders. Um, so, you name it, any type of offender who committed a high risk offence, I worked with. Um, but I did work with a lot of sex offenders over the years, and. In my, the last job that I was in the last three or four years, I actually specialised in working with sex offenders. A lot of sex offender cases within the team will come to me. So, yeah, I've got over 13 years of experience of working with this type of offender. Okay. And did you notice any, like, patterns of behaviours with, uh, with sex offenders? Um, like, how, how they would present as people, whether they took any responsibility for their crimes, that kind of thing? So yeah, I did. So I, um, men and women commit sex offences. In the main, my, my case load were, were men. Mm. And yeah, I saw, I saw a lot of similarities with the types of cases that, that I work with. First of all, um, in the main, when you work with any type of offender, at some point they'd usually admit the offence. Mm. With sex offenders, that was very, very different. Um, nine times out of ten, they would be in complete denial. They'd or, or, you know, if they did admit any part of their offending, they really like minimise their offending. They'd often blame everyone else except themselves. They'd, they'd often blame the victim, and very often the victims were children. Very often the victims were family members. More often than not with a sex offender, the victim is someone they know. Okay. It's usually someone they know within a family. Um, and, yeah, the thing I used to notice over and over again was that so much denial that went on. Um, Additionally to that, a lot of a lot of sex offenders that I work with, they were very manipulative. Mm. So they manipulated manipulated a lot of their family members. Um, one one guy that I work with, he he was he went to prison for a number of years for sexually abusing his daughter from a young age, and he wrapped everyone around his little finger. Um, his, his wife stood by him. His son stood by him, and I used to see that time and time again. Why? Because I don't know. There was this level of manipulation, and, and, and with sex offenders, I used to find um, sim very sim similarities with domestic violence offenders. Actually, there was a lot of different masks they, that they put on, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, and as I say, a lot of manipulation. Um, I, th I think. I think much of the time, because it is such a serious offence, it's easy to be in denial than admit the offending, if that makes sense. Because, but yeah, I used to see that a lot. Um, the, you know, someone actually admitting what they did, if there was some level of admission, they would usually minimise what they did much of the time as well. So, yeah. so as you can imagine, really, really hard to work with. I used to work with um, men within prison, in the main men within prison, when they're released from prison. And we'd um, co complete offence focus work over a period of weeks and you know, try, trying to get trying to get into their into their psyche, into the psychology of what they did was really, really hard because of the level of denial that used to happen a lot. Mm. Why do you mm. think that is? Do you think it's because they know how the rest of the population look at paedophiles and sex offenders with such hatred? Do you think it's like a level of protection for them because they don't want people to hate them? Or do you think it's something else like they don't want to admit to themselves? Like they almost have to compartmentalise that part of their personality to be able to deal with what they've done? Or does it differ with each offender? I think there might be a bit, you know, both of the elements of that that go on, if that makes sense. I think, I think sometimes someone tells themselves that something over and over again, they almost get to believe it themselves, you know? Yeah. Because it, yeah. sometimes it's so horrific, these offences, if it's against a child or a family member, you know, 
quite often these children were very young and, and, you know, to admit that to themselves, let alone anyone else, you know, to kind of, um, I don't know, get over that bridge, if you imagine, would be very difficult. So they're telling this story over and over and over again. Um, and it's easier to tell themselves that story and everyone else that story, isn't it? I think rather than to kind of actually admit what's, what's happened because it is so serious and it's so disgusting and horrific and, you know, and the amount of times I'd work with um, offenders who, who like blamed victims. I mean, it, like just thinking about it makes me kind of shiver. I mean, I'm, I'm so glad I don't do that job anymore. It was the most stressful job you can imagine when you're working with someone week in, week out, week in, week out. And actually blaming a victim, blaming a small child. And I used to hear that. And, and I used to hear all this, this minimization that went around that and the things that they used to say around that. Well, she did this, he did that, they did the other. And, you know, and, and, and trying to kind of get around that was, was so hard because they, they almost believed that themselves. Yeah. And it was almost what, what the, the psychology of that would, would call that distort, a distorted thought pattern, distorted thinking. So it's easy to, dis, di, you know, distort those thoughts um, rather than say, right, actually I did X, Y, Z, you know, if that makes sense. Yeah. 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 I, I've heard just going back to the like victims of, of child sex abuse the child victims. Um, I've, I've heard someone saying, um, they made me think it was my fault that I'd done something wrong. So I yeah. suppose that's quite classic, isn't it? That level of almost, yeah. Putting the blame on the child, which must be so soul destroying for the child um yeah yeah completely but you yeah know. all these like i mean it's the furthest thing from my mind kind of not believing a, a child and supporting say if, for example if their father had sexually abused them and and supporting him instead you know i, I just can't get my head around these these women or these men who would stand by family members who've done such horrific things have been proved in a criminal court beyond all reasonable doubt to have done so as well. I mean, yeah. it must yeah. be, uh, I don't know, self-preservation or not wanting to spoil their family unit. And, you know, it's, I, I don't know. It, it's there's, there's such a level of manipulation that goes on that, that I've seen because when, when I, when I work with a specific offender, for example, I don't just work with them, them, I work with the families, you know, if, yeah. if they're being, in prison I'll go to the home address and I'll check all that out and I'll I'll work you know with the, you know the people who are living there and in cases like that I've just seen it's such a level of manipulation mm. and this this whole ideology of you know I did nothing wrong it wasn't me I was the, the amount of times I used to work with men as I say in the main where they presented as the victim I was the I'm the victim in all of this and I've, he I've heard that sentence so many times I'm the victim seriously when the victim is a child mm. or you know someone they know you know and hearing that it's just this level of manipulation and as i say just family members then will will, will stick by them and yeah I, I don't know i can't get into their heads as well but it's it's just that level of manipulation almost yeah, yeah. That, you know there is there is a lot of power and control that goes on as you said before when um when someone is abusing a child and, and, and they are in that position of trust mm -hmm. and they're abusing that child and of course they're saying all kinds of that child because I used to work with victims as well in that job and when you're working with a victim who's been sexually abused and that abuser is saying you know when, when, when they're obviously a minor and they're saying things like you know this is your fault if, if you know you tell anyone and um, this 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 will happen and, and, and that child will then be led to believe that this is their fault because they're being manipulative manipulated from a very young age when, when they're being abused they're not only being sexually abused but they're being abused in all kinds of other ways yeah um and, and you know and they again may get to that point where you know as i say when i work with victims well you know this was my fault i must have done something i must have said the wrong thing or done the wrong thing that that person is in is in a position of in a position of trust when they're looking after that that child obviously and then for them to abuse that a position of trust in these horrific ways and then to say all this stuff to, to keep themselves safe so they don't get found out or they don't get caught or they don't yeah it's absolutely you know. mind-boggling and horrific i mean obviously you know i'm all too familiar with all this but um so when you when you worked as a 
probation officer did you ever get any kind of special training or any experts coming in to to give you any um to do any courses with you about sex offenders and, and that kind of thing the i'll be honest with you the standard training i don't think is very good um and I, for me if i if i if i could like manage this country and i worked and i managed probation the way the way i because because i i, I work with so many different sex offenders over the years it's very hard i think if someone's someone who sexually abuses children it, for me obviously if, if they're in denial of their offences and they come out of prison that the high risk they're presented as a high risk of harm okay from, from reconviction from from committing these offences again because the ability to control that is very difficult unless the work is done so so for me the way if i you know i was in control of all this i would always say with, with, with that type of offender you would need two people managing that case you've got one person do the offense focused work and the other person managing kind of other stuff as well that kind of goes on because you're there trying to manage all these different things while you're looking after this case and it's very hard to kind of see these little little things that you you miss and that sort of thing so for me it's very important i think for, for two people to manage those cases mm. i was luckily enough to actually go on some some training with um with a psychologist and he he specialized in working with sex offenders um, there was only a, a few of us that managed to go on that training but there wasn't there wasn't just me there was other probation there was some police in the room um, and, and I was so glad I went on that training because it, it actually allowed me to I'd already been in the job probably by that point about I did the job in total for around 13 years mm. I've probably already been in the job about six or seven years but that training was so well done it actually made me work me work very differently with that caseload because it allowed me to see things that I wouldn't have seen and allow me to basically when you work with a sex offender you've got to go there with the questions if you don't ask the question you're not going to get the answer because they're not going to volunteer the answer yeah so that 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 training was really specialist and, and it allowed me to work with offenders in a different way but yeah apart from that for me I think the training you know is quite basic really you just got to kind of get on with it and do what you can um but yeah I learned I learned a lot from that guy um some of the some of the stuff that i didn't even know he was talking about the prevalence of sex offenders and and, and kind of um you know how many how many are, are around he he said during that training which i was surprised about and i've been in the job like i say six or seven years by this time um he actually said out of say you've got 100 100 sex offenders out of that 100 percent, only two two percent actually get convicted and go to prison two percent that's terrifying. Like, it's terrifying. Like when, when I learned this on this, I, I didn't even know this. And I've been working with this, with this, you know, offending group for, for a number of years. And it was shocking. I mean, I knew how prevalent they were because of the amount that were kind of coming through that I was working with. Um, but then I kind of thought to myself, well, hang on a minute. If that 2% then go to prison and they're coming out to see me and I'm working with them, you know, um, on a one-to-one, -one, as I said before, nine times out of 10 will be either in complete denial or minimize their offending when, they, when they've gone through the whole, yeah. you know, they've, they've, they've been arrested, they've been, you know, convicted, gone to the courts, gone to prison for several years. Some of them are not, not very long, actually. Some of, the offend, um, some of the sentences were just ridiculous. Um, I saw one guy that I worked with and, and he committed these, these awful offences and he got like he came out on a community order didn't even go to prison but I used to see that a lot as well that's another story for another day it's just ridiculous um so so yeah when you think of it like that it's just it's shocking it really is and and I just want people out there to know that you know it's just looking after your children you know statistically it's someone you know statistically there's there's so many sex offenders out there why is there only a small percentage committed convicted it's a difficult one that i think there's loads of different things um you know the, the cps getting all the evidence the police having to do the job they're having to go through the courts victims don't want to come forward much of the time because of what we talked about before victims are told it's their fault having to go through the whole ordeal through the police through the courts there's all these things that um you know all these things that kind of contribute as to why only a small percentage do then go to prison and then get convicted but as i say the scary thing is so many of them that do even get convicted you know 
come out of prison so many years later and, and they're still in denial. Don't get me wrong, there were, there were some, some men that I worked with and, and we, did, we did some really good work together and you know, they, but they were the ones that actually admitted their offending and then we were able yeah. to kind of do more of the work. When someone, when someone is, in, is in a lot of, when, the, when someone's in complete denial, it's very hard to do any work with them, as you can imagine. Mm. Yeah, and you kind of you kind of sit there and you'll say, well, hang on a minute, how you know you've been? They'll come in. Well, I did. You know, if someone, whatever type of offender I work with, if they sit down and say, I didn't commit that offence, love, I didn't do it. <sighs> I say, well, 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 you've been convicted by a court of law. You know, I'm here to represent the system, so I can't say, right, you know, I've got to work with you. And someone comes in and sits down and says, I didn't commit that offence. It's very hard then to, you know, do any work past that, really. So basically, most of them don't admit to it. Most of them are walking free. So it, it's it's terrifying how many are out there. And and then we've got family members and, and friends who are just in denial, who are not prepared, or not just in denial, but also not prepared to look at someone as being capable of doing that to a child, especially if it's a family member. But I think we as a nation need to just get that out of our minds and just be realistic and look at the figures that are out there and and believe children as well <clears throat> and you know look at look at this differently and just think well what what can we do we can educate people as to the signs to look out for yeah. because a lot of these children are being threatened as we know um, yeah and then I always say you know carry out surveillance if your child is showing any of these signs because quite evidently from what you're saying as well the courts just aren't doing enough or there's the burden of proof isn't kind of working in this scenario with regards to um evidence that children give you know or they're mm. just called liars so in, instead of testing that evidence in a way of believing the child they're almost like straight in the test and the evidence as disbelieving the child and trying to discredit so it, it's that that's why i i always say you know, and I've got videos up about that as well, about surveillance and that kind of thing. The signs are, are out there. But mm. the fact of the matter is, is that we've got so many paedophiles walking amongst us, pretending to be normal people, acting mm. like normal people in every walks of life. And, 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 you know, like, I think, I think people have this preconception, oh, um, a, a paedophile or a sex offender is going to be the man at the end of the street with a, you know, in a dirty mat. That is not the case. You know, I used to get men that used to come in, I've worked with, you know, normal, what would appear to look and, and come across like normal people. You know, this isn't, it's not a type of person or a type of look. This could literally be someone around the corner seriously because I used to work with men that came across as respectable as this and that and they were committing horrific offences you know and, and when they come in and then they're at a point and they're kind of in denial or minimizing the stuff it's just you just think you know what, what what's going on yeah and um, so these people can come across as credible and normal kind of looking people mm -hmm. I remember going back to that training that I was telling you about I remember the very first day um, the start of the training and um, the guy kind of introduced himself and he said right he said um, bearing in mind this is a room full of probation officers there was some police these are people who are used to working with this client group yeah and he said right the first thing I'm going to do I'm going to get um, show these pictures on the screen picture of three people um, and there was two there was two men and one one woman and he was like right I want you to guess which one is the which one is the sex offender which one is the paedophile so we, we looked at, you know, and it could have been any, any of the, and he said all three are, but there was one person next to me going, it looks like that person on the left, it looks like him, or, you know, do, do you know what I mean? And this was a room full of trained people. Yeah, oh gosh. The other thing that you mentioned there, the other thing I, I, from experience, I think personally, is there isn't enough training. I don't think there's enough training in social services. There's not enough training in, within police because, because I've seen it. I've worked with directly with social services on cases. I've worked obviously with the police and I just don't think there's enough training. Um, you know, young children do not lie. No. You know, if, if a child comes in and, you know, they, 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 how can young children tell a catalogue of lies? You know, so, so there must, I don't know, there must need to be more training, more awareness, like you say. Um, it's really, really important. It's crucial, and it's important at every step of the way, from social services to, to police to courts. You know, there, there needs to be 
some change or something because it can't carry on the way it is because no. you know it's yeah it's you're right good. it can't carry on how it is we've we've um you know i've witnessed firsthand the appalling remarks of some some of the so-called police who are meant to be there to believe children but instead they believe yeah. the well-rehearsed practiced accomplished liar and just because he presents he or she presents well to them and is is friendly and charming that's enough for them quite often case mm -hmm. closed you know it's obviously yeah. the child's fault and you know that's all for you to you think the police who are there to protect children you know will be there to do that job because as i said before if you can get um sex offenders paedophiles who get people on side like family members like wives and sons daughters neighbors if they can get the closest family members on side do you know you yeah. think police would be trained to deal with this differently you know you would you would it does need to change because at the moment it's almost like if you if you decide to bring children into the world you're taking a massive risk that's how i look at it you know in this mm -hmm. in this country in this climate you know you are taking a risk bringing children into it and it shouldn't be like that they yeah. should be protected they should be believed and we should have more you know like like for example i really believe now that if a child discloses sexual abuse against a parent or anyone i think that person should be when they're brought in for questioning by the police when they're arrested i think they should be asked to take a polygraph test and, and well, that should yeah. be used to support the evidence yeah so 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 um I didn't do a massive amount of work around this because it's only kind of coming in towards the end of my probation the last couple of years. But um, the, the last kind of two or three years, I think it was, they were um, bringing in polygraph training and they were not for us specifically to use, but, um, you know, specific trained people using polygraph. So, so you could work with, with sex offenders and you could work with them using these polygraphs to, to kind of manage their risk, you know, through the... Yeah. But if you've got obviously a sex offender in prison, um, then the risk is being managed, you'd like to think, because they're in prison. When they come out, that's a different story. It's really, you've got to really manage that risk closely moving forward but when, when they're on the licence. Because, of course, f for me, if you've got someone in complete denial or minimising their offending, if they come out and they've done a lot of work in prison and they want to continue working moving forward, that then obviously you would imagine you can kind of manage the risk more if you've got someone in complete denial for me they're still going to be classed as a high risk of harm yeah. um a high risk of reoffending. so actually you know when they brought that in as, as, as part of that I, th I thought that was really good because it's just you know an extra thing that can that can work with these type of offenders and it wasn't it wasn't any other offenders it was purely for, for, for sex offenders that, that that was brought in as i said so I, I, I didn't do too much but i just think that's really important because it's going to help you manage that risk yeah i agree mm -hmm. yeah I, I think it's important you know I, I really think the polygraph should be used you know when when you know the ministry of justice are you know they, they rolled them out amongst the police forces they're now being uh, as you say they're being used now with uh, convicted paedophiles who've been released on probation who've opted into the program some some have ended up going back into prison because they failed the polygraphs about you know for example looking at child um abuse images on the internet that kind of thing so it is being used successfully you know um and it's about time they use more as I say, but um, but yeah, this has been really interesting, Janine. Um, so thanks very much for your time, and uh, yeah, it's um, yeah, I think it's it's very enlightening all of this, and we just need to talk about it more. It's really important to talk, and I think people just need to be aware, like you said yourself, spot the signs, and understand that this is prevalent, yeah. and you know, it's just about really keeping children safe, looking after children and you know managing that really kind of moving forward definitely yeah mm. right oh